look, I'm not going to lie. This is probably going to be a very, very long video. And the reason why it's going to be a long video is because the concept of an entity home and how you apply it for different websites, different businesses, different entities, essentially, uh, is, is mixed, right? Because some websites have an about page, some websites don't. So what do you do with that? Where is the entity home? And furthermore, how do you reference the entity home on other pages using connected schema? So that's what we're going to dive in today in this video. And what I want you to take away from this is, first of all, understand what an entity home is in the context of what you're trying to achieve in terms of search engine optimization. Uh, and, and specifically, what you're trying to achieve by describing a particular entity. Now, that could be a business, could be an organization, it could be a person such as yourself or myself or your client. And then in the wider context of things, once you know what that entity is, how you describe it, where do you place that in the JSON-LD? Like, how do you do that with schema markup? And how do you reference that entity home without duplicating the same code? across multiple pages. Now, I made a Miro board of a visualization of showing, you know, encapsulating what this concept I was referring to. And what I've done is put in two common web pages that most websites have. Now, again, some web pages don't have an about page. Like I'm going to show you an example where uh, one of my friend's websites, she doesn't have an about page because I figured we've never needed one and I haven't been bothered to create one. So what do we do with that? I'll show you later. But for most service-based businesses, for most corporations, for most businesses on the internet, they will have an about page and they will most certainly have a home page. So how do we connect the two? Which one is exactly the entity home? And how do we actually do all this with schema markup? So that is the big picture concept where you have a home page. And then on that home page, in my reference anyway, from my perspective anyway, the home page, which I show here, it should always reference the main entity of the website. So for an e-commerce website, you could have all these products on the homepage, right? But instead of marking all those up, which you can, you want to use the item property uh, main entity and make reference to the organization or essentially the business behind the e-commerce. That's what you, the homepage entity is for. But in terms of the actual entity home, where should that exist? Now, if it's again, let's say Rebel Sport or Dick Smith or any of your large online retailers, they typically have an about page. And that's why the entity page should sit on the about page. Now, I'm going to jump ahead and show you an example of the schema markup or the knowledge graph that I've created with schema markup for my own entity home. So all these are nodes, right? And each of these circles are nodes. Each of those nodes represent an entity. Essentially, it's a thing. And what you may or may not be able to see here is that there is a person schema type. There's a profile page schema type. There's video object. There's multiple schema types being referenced on this page. But the page that I'm referencing is not, in fact, this. That's on my home page. The schema that I just showed you is in fact this page, it's my about page. So this page, if you put into classy schema or into the validator, uh, it will show you this essentially. So I'm marking up that I'm a person, this is what I do, this is where I've worked at, what do I know, all that good stuff. So this, the about page for my own website acts as the entity home. And this is what I've done on the entity home because this is all about me as a person. So of course you can see that I've described, I had a role in 2008. I'm an alumni of uh, this particular university. In fact, I can already see, I probably made, not probably, I, I think I've made an error here because this should not be an alumni of that. Alumni of should be connected to the person as opposed to this organizational role, which is a bit odd. I'll have to go in and fix that. Now, I've also described where I live and work as well as my address. I've marked up an image of myself so that the search engine can see this is who I am, not that it really cares. And then I have marked up things that I know. So knows about, knows about. So I know this thing about search engine optimization. I know this thing about digital marketing. 
I work for this corporation, which is also an entity. What is this entity called? It's Adobe. Uh, and then all of this exists on the profile page, which is a schema type. Now it's a subtype of web page and I've decided to use profile page as opposed to about page. Doesn't really matter uh, in my opinion anyway, but this is essentially this whole entire page. And all I've done really on this entity home is to mark up all this unstructured data, which is just text on a page, right? And turn it into structured data, which is turning strings of text into things. And again, all these nodes, all these circles represent things, concepts, and the lines between them establish the relationship between these things. And that is context. And that is how you communicate context to a machine such as Google, a search engine. All right, so that's one example. Here's another example of an entity home that I've created for one of my friend's websites. Uh, she has a physical bridal store here in Sydney in Ride. And what's interesting about this setup is that we never created an about page. For whatever reason, I think it was just too hard in the beginning and then it's just evolved to the point where there is no about page. And so on the home page, we have some information about, here's her reviews, here are some images of a real clients, here's the location, the map pack. And then here we have like a very short, I would say this is like 50 words or less describing the business itself. And then down in the footer, we have, you know, typical stuff of the business hours, the address, uh, the phone number and email contact and then a whole bunch of other stuff that you'll usually find on the footer. So in this instance, for this local business schema type, the entity home, because there's no about page, remember, the entity home exists on the home page. And this is how I have marked it up. So this is the home page, the website. It's over here. This is the actual page of the home page, hence why it's called web page, find your dream wedding dress, Emerald Bridal, which is a part of the website, which is called Emerald Bridal. And then I'm not sure if you can see here, but the main entity between the web page and the local business and organization schema markup is this. So what I'm trying to show you in this example is that here's the web page, which is the home page. I've set that up as the entity home for the actual business. So this is the entity home for the entity local business and organization. And that's why this is here. This is the actual main entity of the home page, and this in fact is describing, as you'll see, all those nodes that are coming out and the arrows pointing it describes all the things that I've marked up about this particular business. So I've marked up uh, as the entity home. This is the service that Emerald Bridal offers. You can it, it offers well, and it services this particular area. I've linked that to a Wikipedia and Wikipedia data page. This is an action that you can take. This is its location. And these orange-ish, amber-orange-ish circles, they represent all the business hours that I have marked up, which are also reflected in the text and also the same as you'll find on the Google business profile. I've gone one step further. So what I've done is, of course, this is the local business. I've defined it. Uh, I've defined the opening hours, where it's located, the service it offers. And on top of that, I've also linked to products it sells, but not individual products, because a unique thing about, or frustrating unique thing about Emerald Bridal is that it, it doesn't, it's an online transactional e-commerce website. This is purely an online brochure. You can look at all the products, but you can't buy them online. It's more of a browse and then make an appointment and go in to try on different gowns, that kind of business. So the way I've worked that around is, use the offer schema type, link that, see how there's an arrow, there's a clear relationship between the local business and the offer, and then I've linked that to the product group. And so strategically, instead of linking out to individual products and marking each of those up, which wouldn't make sense because again, she doesn't sell them online, you can't buy them, you can't check out, you can't add them to cart, then you can't use a lot of that useful product-based schema item properties. Therefore, I've used the product group instead and those are actually linked to some of these categories. So boho style, 
Uh, what else have I linked out to? So that's boho wedding dresses, A-line wedding dresses, and I think, yes, there's another one, wedding dresses on sale. Now, the reason why there's only these three as opposed to all the others, uh, which, you know, there's many different types, were that I couldn't find uh, Wikipedia or even Wikidata references of the ball gown, mermaid, sheath, and trumpet silhouettes. For some reason, no one's created it. Maybe that's an opportunity for someone to do that. Uh, but there's definitely an A-line in Wikipedia, and that's why I've marked uh, those up uh, here. So I've kind of gone on a tangent, but this illustrates what an entity home looks like if it were on the homepage. Now, I want to reference a very important video, and I need to be very transparent here, is that a lot of this work... Uh, about entity homes, I first came across from this amazing man called Jason Barnard. I met him many years ago when I was working agency side and my boss uh, invited him across and we had a lovely lunch and then subsequently we spent more time in Melbourne at a conference. He's the brand SERP guy, like he literally, that's his brand name. And he wears a red shirt and he hosts quite often webinars where he talks about SEO or rather entities and I first came across this concept of entity home from Jason Barnard. And I want to show you a particular clip from this video where Olga Zahr has generously shared one of her private coaching sessions that she's paid Jason for, and she's made it available on YouTube. And I want you to listen to this. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. In that case, you could just create another page, which is seozly slash olgazar and just make it factual news as a profile page and then you can keep this page exactly as it is mm -hmm. and write on the other one olgazar seo professional add some okay. profile page schema markup to it which would support your entity so we will move this mar markup from this one to that one the other one because now this one is an entity home yeah and it, it's not an appropriate entity home which is why we're struggling with okay. the ranking, as you said, on the left-hand side. All right. So I've taken that out of context, but I will link to this in the description below. I highly encourage you sit through the entire 34 minutes because this really is the only source of information that I found openly on the internet about entity homes, about semantic SEO, about linking schema markup to a particular reference address on a website so that it's always the preferred source of truth. And and I guess if we take one huge step back and I fail to really describe or explain what an entity home is, it's essentially that. You are telling a search engine through schema markup that this particular URL, which becomes a URI, is the single source of truth about that particular entity. And so to set the context of that video clip that I just showed you, let me uh, show you Olga Zar's SERP. So when you type in Olga Zar, you can see that she has a she has a knowledge panel. You can see she is described as an author in the subtitle. There's her name. And it's pulling, unfortunately, through all that work that she was doing with Jason, right? Instead of pulling from her website, her actual entity home, Google has decided to pull from Wix. And before that, I think it was pulling from Search Engine Journal. And so for most of you who want a knowledge panel, this is good enough. But for those of you who want to tell Google, this is the information that I want you to use. And this is the single source of truth about everything, about that particular person or a particular brand or business then you want to set that up on one particular page, either the about page or maybe on the home page, stuff like that, so that you can reference it in your schema markup. So let me recap because I've covered quite a lot here in a rather jumbled manner and I wanna make sure that you're not confused at this stage. So what are we trying to achieve here? So again, with semantic SEO, with schema markup, we're trying to, help Google understand things that are important to us. In this context, it's usually going to be a brand, a business, or about a person. 
And the way you do that is with semantic, or not with semantic, but you use it with schema markup. And you do that on a particular page. And that page becomes the entity home. That becomes your single source of truth for everything about that person. So coming back to my example, this is my page of Daniel K. Chung. I'm trying to tell Google that this is the single source of truth about this particular entity, which happens to be a person. And these are all the things that you should know about this person. And you can validate this with other sources on the internet, but this should be your single source of truth. And that's why I have connected it to the YouTube channel where I live, my educational background, all the podcasts that I've been on, and a brief introduction about my experience in the industry and what my job is and who I work for. And the end result is this knowledge graph, all the connected schema markup that describes who I am as I have through the text or unstructured data here. So I think you should understand this bit so far, nothing too hard, right? The next step of this is, I think, and the challenge that no one else has really shared is, so how do you reference one thing versus the other? Or rather, so here's your entity home, right? This is your entity home. How do you reference this same stuff how do you reference the person without having to repeat all of this on every single page? Which is a really good question because you don't want to duplicate unnecessary code. JSON LD is very light. It doesn't have a lot of overhead, but you want your code to be clean. And here's the thing about schema markup, right? You should only be marking up things that exist on that page. So therefore, let's say, Let's go to, let's find one of my blog posts, right? Let's find a, a how to write JSON LD for maximum semantic SEO gain. So here's an article and let's say I want to mark this up and tell the search engine that I, as a person, Daniel K. Chung was the author of this content. Would I then have to do this and then repeat all of this? No, because again, the entity home is our single source of truth. And because it's our single source of truth, we give it a unique identifier. And that is how you reference it. So let me show you an example, right? So let me grab, okay, let me just, sorry. I might, I'm gonna fast forward this section because it's unnecessary. All right, so we've gotten this far. I'm really doing the bare bones of schema markup. This is by no means what you should be doing in terms of the comprehensiveness, but I'm simply marking up this particular web page, right? This is the article designated as a web page schema type. Here's a URL. You could do the name and all that stuff, but here I want to connect it to the author. So how do I connect it to the person without duplicating all that code? And how do I do that? by referencing the unique identifier that I have put on my entity home. And this is how you would do it. So author type, what is the type of schema? Person, clearly. What is the name of the person? It's Daniel K. Chung. Now you could do a lot more things, but remember, you should be only marking up things that exist on the page. And we scroll down, uh, I do have a bit, I have an author bio box, so that's cool. So at least I can mark this up. I could even go same as my Facebook profile, Twitter and LinkedIn, which I, let's do that, right? As well as let's reference the entity home itself. So as I said before, let's go same as, and then just quickly, I'll grab the URLs, same as my Facebook, same as my, LinkedIn profile, I'll just do two as a demo. That's good enough, right? So that's same as now, because we're only marking up the things that exist on the page, let's reference where this entity home is, which is the at ID. And I already have this set up as my about page, which is danielkchul.com.au about could be that, it could also be this. Let me uh, make sure that this is exactly 
what I have here by, let's grab this URL, right? Let's go into schema validator and see what I have set up as, oh no, that's not the right URL, my bad, should be about. Hey, you're still here. That tells me that this content is probably not terrible. I'll take that as a win. So can you do me a small, small, small favor? See that like button on your screen? Tap that for me. And that's it. Thank you and continue watching the show. So this is my entity home. As you can see here, it's the profile page, main entity. Where is the at ID? There it is. So there it is. I'll have to zoom in for you. There we go. I have my, the URL of my about page slash URL fragment hashtag person. And that is the unique ID that I can use to reference it at all times. So I don't have to repeat a lot of the code, plus I'm not referencing things that don't exist on the page because if you start doing that consistently, then that's a pattern and Google will go, okay, you're not actually describing the important bits of the web page, therefore I'm gonna ignore all of that good stuff. And that's, you don't want that. You want to make sure that your schema markup is being honored by a search engine and that it's always only marking up A, the important things and B, the things that actually exist on the page. So what do we have here? This essentially tells us that here's that web page from before, how to write JSON LD. I've connected it to the person schema and instead of listing out every attribute that I could using the schema person type, I have simply used the at ID item property and linked to the URI that I have established on the entity home. So let's go back to the example from before of Emerald Bridal because we know that on the home page, this is in fact the entity home. So let's pull this into schema validator and then I'll show you how I have set up the at ID on the entity home, which happens to be on the home page itself and how I've referenced that from another page uh, using that same method that I just showed you a few minutes ago. So here it is, not that you can see, let's zoom in. So we have the web page because it's a home page. It's part of a website. That's great. Main entity which is the business itself. And here's the ad ID, right? I've got emeraldbridal.com.au slash hashtag organization. This is the URI. This is the universal source of truth for all the information about Emerald Bridal, which happens to be a business, which you can see. Here's the name, here's the URL. Here are the profiles, even to the tax ID, telephone, price range, all that stuff, including the service and the service type opening hours and the product categories that it offers. So clearly this is describing everything that is only available on the homepage. I'm not referencing anything that's not. And this becomes the single source of truth for the organization or the business itself. Right now, let's find a page where I've referenced this. So what I've done here is this is the bridal fitting service page. So you could think of this as a contact page, but I've made this to be the service page itself. So you could think of a, this business as, yes, it sells wedding dresses, but it also has a periphery service where you can come in and try wedding dresses. So therefore let's mark that up as well. And so it has its own dedicated page, which is bridal fitting service. Let me throw that into here as well as the validator and we can see what happens. All right, classy scheme is taking a while, but validators already done it. So again, it's a type of web page. Here's a name, here's a URL, nothing new here. Uh, is part of the website, here's the main entity. Here is the organization, the at ID and it's funny how I reference all these things, right? You'll be going, hey, Dan, didn't you say you shouldn't duplicate all this stuff? There's overhead in code and you should be only referencing things on the page itself. Well, when you look here, 
all this information is on that page because I've deliberately made this into a contact page, but with a lot of FAQs that is about the experience that a potential customer can expect when they go in to try on one or more multiple gowns. So we have the business hours, we have the map. So these are all marked here. So from a technical perspective, I'm not breaking any rules. All this information is here. Even the ratings, I have marked that up. There's 223 reviews as of today. And then she has an average rating of 4.9 stars, which again, I have referenced clearly here. Here's proof. So I'm not doing anything dodgy. And then if I go across to Classy Schema, Visualization, here we go. I believe this is the web page, Bridal Fitting Service. Yep. Here's the service. That service is as a relationship to the business itself. And there we go. That is the entity home. And as you can see here, I referenced the entity home here. Now, if I was really lazy, I could simply just reference this in the markup. Actually, let me show you. Let me show you how I would do this in a very lazy way. <coughs> let me drink some coffee. So this is how I could have done it as a shortcut. So here's a URL. Now the main entity is, what is the main topic that I want to convey to the search engine about that particular page. Well, it's a service itself. So it's a service. And then describe the service type of which there are two. There is a wedding gown fitting. And then there is a, oh my God, there is a wedding dress fitting. There we go. So we have two names for the service type. We don't need a same as. This actually has its own at ID as well. But this time without a URL fragment. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Oh my God, I'm not even sharing the right screen. Sorry. So recap. What I wasn't showing you was this. So I had the web page, a URL, very basic stuff. What is the main focus of that particular web page or this particular web page? Well, it's the service. The service type, I've named it as wedding gown fitting and wedding dress fitting. That is the actual service that you can get from Emerald Bridal. And here is the unique ID. Now, what's next? Now, I could connect to the business itself, to the main entity in one of two ways or multiple ways actually. And this is probably perhaps a good segue to show you something that I've talked about in another video here on Scheming Schemers. But in case you haven't seen that, maybe it's a good time to introduce you to this amazing tool by Schema App. So Martha Van Berkel, and I believe her partner created Schema App. It's an amazing tool. And one of my early mentors in semantic SEO, Dave Ojeda, Ojeda, sorry, Dave, I'm butchering your name every single time. Dave Ojeda, Jada, O-J-E-D-A. <laughs> he, he consults for them and helps build out these awesome things. So this is one of the free tools that you can use, but essentially as an aside, Schema App is pretty much an end-to-end -end solution where it can build all your connected schema for your website and create knowledge graphs on your behalf. So you don't have to do it my way. You don't have to manually type in stuff. This does it all for you. And so why am I showing you this? Well, the schema paths tool in this context is, as I was saying, how do I connect? How can I find ways to connect the web page to the service or from the service to the business itself? Because we know we can connect the web page to the business quite easily. We just go publisher, use the publisher item property, and then you describe, uh, then you use the at ID for the entity home. But then for in this instance, right, I want to connect maybe the service to, 
What am I thinking? To the business. Sorry, mind blank. Now, I already know the answer, but I want to show you in real time how you would do that. So you come to here, you get your from and to. So I want to connect. Sorry, I keep forgetting to show you the screen. So you have your from and to. So from, as you can see from VS Code from before, it was from a service type. So type in S, scroll all the way down. He's a service. And then I want to connect it to an organization or a local business. Let's just try local business. There we go. So these are the two schema types. And you click on this. And there we go. Schema app has already provided us different pathways that you can connect the two. So possible paths, service to local business, because again, here we are trying to connect service to the next thing, which is the entity home, which happens to be the business itself. How do we do that? Well, coming to the schema app paths tool, we can see that service has a property area. So brand broker, all this stuff. Oh, this one looks right. This is the one that I was thinking of, provider. So service has property provider, which expects organization of which local business inherits from because that's a child schema type of the organization schema type. So let's use that. So coming back to VS Code, I go, okay, so the provider of this service happens to be an organization. So add type local business name emerald bridal of which what is the single source of truth for this business remember it was the home page and we assigned it a uri which happens to be this right if i recall correctly if i come across to here it was this yes so it's this, which I have correctly put into here. So here we have, essentially what we've done is we've connected web page to the service to also the business via its entity home. So the benefit of this is that I'm not describing in full every minute detail of the business. All I need to do is to reference this. Now, let's test if I've done this right. Let's throw this into here and see does it validate for one? Zero errors, zero warnings, that's great, but that doesn't always tell us if it's actually kosher. So back to classy schema, I want to see if the relationships have been created correctly. Now, of course, classy schema won't go and crawl that particular URL where the entity home is, but it should show us the connection between it. And there we go, here we go. So here's the web page the service, bridal fitting service page. It's linked as the main entity, the main entity of that service. Main entity of that page is the actual service, which is a schema type of which the local business Emerald Bridal provides said service. Oh my God, I keep not showing the right screen. I'm so sorry. So this was it. So web page, service, how it connects all together. And that really is connected schema. And that hopefully explains what I was trying to achieve in this conceptual framework in this Miro board. So here we go. We have homepage, web page, personal organization, website. They're all connected. And uh, if you haven't already seen this, you can do so. Uh, I'll, again, I'll throw the link in the description below so that you can see it in real life. And I have some examples uh, marked up for you as well. So 34 minutes later, I'm already coughing. <laughs> uh, what have we learned here? I'm hoping that the takeaway for you is that you should have an entity home. And this reminds me, I want to convey something of where, of what types of situations you can use an entity home. So let me show you Chrome and let's look for a dentist near me. Actually, no, let's do, actually, I know this particular, I know this particular business 
So here's a very useful way of using entity home. So here is like a psychology practice. They have multiple locations. There's five, Burwood, Chatswood, Castle Hill, Hurstville, and Sydney CBD. So the entity home should be on the about page for new vision psychology. So this in itself should have all the, this should be the single source of truth for all information about this particular business. So you link to the ABN, you link to the tax ID, you also have department item property where you can describe each of these of how they're connected to the parent company itself and have all the maps connected there. That's one entity home. There's other entity homes. You can have entity homes for each of the practitioners. In fact, this is something that I highly recommend for any business or organization or publisher that delves into informational content, in particular, your money, your life, YMYL topics. Because now we know EEAT is not a ranking factor, but EEAT as a concept makes a lot of sense. Now, maybe today, in today's world, Google is not quite there, but eventually it will get there where it can figure out who is who and why that particular person should be trusted for a particular topic. And that's why you want to have an entity home for each of your practitioners or staff members on their profile pages. So in this case, Joanna, this is her entity home. So you have all this unstructured data. You want to mark this up with structured data. And this becomes an about page or a profile page. And then you have all the item properties that describe everything here that you can, and you relate it to the business itself, New Vision Psychology, and this becomes the entity home. And how you can use this is, let's say Joanna's talking about a particular topic. Let's say she actually authored this thing about school refusal strategies, what to do as a parent. Let's say Joanna either wrote this or reviewed it and then edited it. You could use schema markup to actually declare that. So Joanna was the person who either was the author or was the reviewer or reviewed by or editor of this particular content. And then using that, you wouldn't need to repeat all that schema markup of who Joanna is. You simply reference the at ID, which would be this, could be just this URL, or you could make it you know, hashtag person to be simple. All right. So, so that gives you a bit more of an idea of how you can apply entity homes. They're not just for businesses. They could be, they're not just for a person of a business, but all your team members, especially if they're creating content. All right. So <coughs> where does this leave you? Well, the first step is always to go into the website that you are representing or looking after and identify what do you want to convey to a search engine? And the first step is usually that it is a business, that it is an organization. And then you look at the infrastructure of that website. Does it have a company page? Does it have an about us page? If so, that about page becomes the entity home. That becomes the single source of truth about that particular thing. And you describe it in full using schema marker, making sure, right, that everything that you mark up with JSON-LD is reflected in the text. So maybe you have to add in some additional content to the page so that you can reference it with your schema markup. So that's the first step. Now you've described what that thing is. Now you want to connect it onto your homepage. That homepage, thankfully, actually have a template that lets you do that. But on the homepage, you make the entity, the main entity, the main focus or the subject of that web page to be about the business, about the organization. And you use the connector at ID to reference your entity home without repeating all that unnecessary code, unless that information is reflected on your homepage. And the added benefit is that every other time that that particular entity needs or should be referenced in your content, then you can use that same at ID, that unique identifier to do so without again repeating all that code. And that is entity homes and schema markup, homepages and connected schema 
all described, hopefully, in a meaningful and understandable way to you. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but usually speaking, it's going to be a case by case. But if there is a common theme to the questions, maybe I'll do another video to dive deeper or provide a very hands-on uh, demonstration of how you do it. But give it a go. Because the first step, again, is to identify what are the things that you want to describe with schema markup to a search engine? How do you connect it? And then how do you connect it to the right single source of truth? And that, again, is a point of Entity Home. Now, the added benefit of this, of course, is if that you are a person or an organization, the assumption is that if you were to set this up correctly and Google can validate these external references that you have included in your schema markup, then in theory, you should be able to get a knowledge panel. All right, folks, you've reached the very end. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Daniel K. Chung. And before you go, don't forget to watch this or this. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the show and I'll see you in the next post.